Shalom. Is all right, it's not going to be a long one, but it's going to be kind of unusual from the regular stance that this channel has been presenting. First off, also on a human level, I want to give a due respect to the sister Dami who actually helped me get this together, as well as all of the other brothers, sisters, elders who have actually influenced me to be able to teach in the first place, okay? So what this is called is, this is ridiculous. When trying to be too politically correct goes wrong, all right? Now, there are people talking about toxic masculinity and what they are attempting to state on the sly or on the low, all right, is essentially saying, that is too much masculine aspects, quote, masculine energy, and that can be kind of toxic. The only one who try to present something of that sort will be a male who has a feminist spirit because perhaps that particular male is struggling within himself about his masculinity. So he'll present the idea with his feminine spirit that having quote, too much masculinity is toxic. That's one particular aspect or energy that is being presented from that kind of person, if you will. The other aspect, brothers and sisters, it boils down to saying, that women should rule, men have absolutely no place, and so forth and so on, which as we know is absurd because men have their role as well as women having their role. Children have their role as well. When you have a society where people are saying that the children don't act like normal children, and then you have the same society saying that women don't act like normal women, and then you have the same society saying that men don't act like normal men, that should tell people that people male, female, or child alike are not in their normal role and state at this particular time. You understand? But you have those who get, quote, in their feelings and say, well, you know what? Um, It's not really like that. You know, or you're just sexist. Brothers and sisters, that right there is extremely foolish. All right? And these are the kind of things that we want to talk about brothers and sisters in this particular video and so forth. So without fin any further ado, we're going to go on into this particular teaching and into this particular aspect. All right. Let us go, brothers and sisters, to the next slide. The definition of street harassment. It is gender-based street harassment is unwanted comments, gestures, and actions forced on a stranger in a public place without their consent and is directed at them because of their actual or perceived sex, gender, gender expression, or sexual orientation. Brothers and sisters, let's stop right there, all right? Because this definition, all right, is saying that street harassment is based upon one's perceived sex or gender. What are we to think, brothers and sisters, of one's gender unless you're speaking about male or female how can it be perceived should not a male be perceived as a male and a female be perceived as a female 
what energy and what aspect is being presented, brothers and sisters, to sit there and state that street harassment, quote unquote, can be based upon unwanted comments, gestures, or actions forced on a stranger in a public place without their consent and is directed at them because of their actual or perceived sex or gender. Gender expression. What in the world is that? That means perhaps then that you're expressing the feminine gender when you are male or you're expressing the male gender when you're really a female. Similar to some places like maybe Atlanta, I'm thinking, you know, when women peer down their breasts and they got a beard on looking like a man and they have this award show or whatever they call it at. You understand? That right there is the reason why I said in the previous slide that it must be the kind of person that's either a male that doesn't want to be a male or a female that does not want to be a female. I remember discussing something with people and they were saying that um, the aspect of saying one is a female is objective. Brothers and sisters, We are living in an extreme sexual deviant society. And it's deeper than what one may think. When you have shows that show 12-year-old, 10-year-old drag queens and so forth to someone, that is ridiculous. I remember when I was 12 years old. I was a boy then and I'm a man now. And this is no disrespect or a shot to self or anything like that. I was in the store. Okay, I'm going to go there. At 12 years old, trying to sit there and look through the, the sex magazines. And the guy that was at the counter was saying to me when I, like I said, was 12 years old, hey, hey, you're too young for that. And I was so embarrassed that I walked out, out the store. That was in 1992 when I was 12. I knew that even though it's normal for a male to like a female, Maybe I should not have been trying to look at the sex magazines. You understand? Maybe my age was not suitable for me to sit there and try to look at Blacktail and Playboy and Penthouse and Hustler and so forth and so on. You understand? The person who ran the store knew that there were other customers there. The reason why I was comfortable even doing that in the store is because I already had bought magazines like that from that store. So I knew where to go. You understand? So this is something, brothers and sisters, we want to point out for edification purposes. So when we look at what this new definition since after the year 2000 came in of what's called street harassment, it says what? Gender-based street harassment is unwanted comments, gestures, and actions forced on a stranger in a public place without their consent and it and is directed at them because of their actual or perceived sex, gender, gender expression, or sexual orientation. Street harassment includes unwanted whistling, leering, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic slurs persistent request for someone's name, number, or destination after they've said no. Sexual names, comments, and demands following. Flashing, public masturbation, groping, sexual assault, and rape. Now, let's be clear on this, brothers and sisters. I am not advocating that somebody grope somebody in the street. You understand? I am not advocating that somebody rape somebody in the street or elsewhere. You understand? I am not advocating flashing or what they call mooning in certain cases of showing off your behind or your penis or your vagina or anything like that in the street or so forth and so on. You understand? But let's understand what's going on in this particular aspect. You have it to where what they define as street harassment. If a person is doing those kind of things, such as flashing, also under the definition of, quote, mooning, and so forth and so on. But what do you do as the person who is a victim of one who is flashed? So let's say if a person, quote, flashes me, 
what should I do in that particular case? Because if I sit there and say that a person showed me his penis because this person is a sodomite or a homosexual, am I then under the aspect of homophobic? This is how you know their new age definitions and subject matters, brothers and sisters, is based upon wickedness, and therefore, it's not going to be able to sit there and hold up for two months longer. Just as much as you can sit there and point out that somebody who flashes or disrespects somebody in that particular regard can be labeled as a homosexual, aka a sodomite, and so forth and so on. Oh, no, you cannot say that because then that will make you homophobic. So do you sit there and accept the flashing that comes to you because you don't want to be defined as a, quote, homophobe? Brothers and sisters, this society, as stated, is more sexual perverse than we could have even imagined. You understand? Let's take a time to stop for a second. Why in part is this presentation done? Is this. Black people have too much sexual deviance among us that we refuse to sit there sometimes and admit. You understand? That's the real once it comes down to that. It is a problem. It's a sick problem. You understand? In the book that I wrote, Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68, I spoke about the aspect of a stepfather raping and or molesting his stepdaughter and the mother taking sides with her husband. You understand? I was saying a solution to that would be if the girl, the child, the adolescent is making those kind of charges against somebody, both parties, certainly the accused, should sit there and be compelled to have to take a lie detector test. Maybe that can sit there and help clear the person if the person is innocent. You understand? But with the sick mindset, as it talks about in Deuteronomy 28, when it says the most high will smite one with madness, blindness, and astonishment of heart, the mother will sit there and take sides with that saying, oh girl, you just don't want me to have a man. And that right there has happened among us as a people. You understand? So we have to begin to sit back and see what in the world is going on. You cannot, and I'm going to have to go there, try to sit there and take the said now sexual pervert R. Kelly and then try to sit there and say, well, in ancient days, there was nothing wrong with a 19-year-old or an even an 18-year-old with a man that's over 40 because you're getting your riches in this society. So following a law that says make sure they're of a certain age is not against the laws of the Torah. You understand? But you don't do things, brothers and sisters, with the aspect of saying that you see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. You don't see nothing wrong because age is just a number. Work the middle. Stroke the middle. That ain't what the laws of Leviticus is talking about. There are Israelites that were trying to sit there and indirectly trying to say, well, there's nothing wrong with what R. Kelly was doing with the people with the ages. If the person was really of 18, even or 19. Brothers and sisters, please sit there and show with your perverted self who you are so I can block you and keep you for my family and my daughter. Because if you got children, sister or brother, and that's what you're teaching them, you're preventing a person to not be inside of the white man's prison system. What you are making is another person to be incarcerated in this system because of being brought up on charges of harassment or assault or rape. These are things we want to talk about. You understand what I'm saying? What I'm presenting, brothers and sisters, taking the kind of a deviant from or deviating from the subject matter right here, you cannot sit there, brothers and sisters, as an Israelite, sit there and say that men in the ancient days, in the days of the Bible, were taking women as wives that were of a certain age, 16, 17, 18 years old, and then apply it to a person who has his said wife talking about work the middle. Work the, you know what the middle is? Vagina, in case if you didn't know. Those men in the Bible who had consent from the parents, you understand, were not having their wives up there talking about age ain't nothing but a number, work the middle, stroke the middle. Their wives weren't saying that, pervert. So you can't sit there with your deviant mind 
getting so infatuated with R. Kelly's witchcraft on the younger women to sit there and say, well, they was doing it back then. And if they weren't doing it back then, oh, house of Israel, why are we in captivity now? Don't you see the connection? Don't you see you probably could not be doing the same exact thing back then as now or forever because it did not help your people? You understand? This is what we want to talk about for reason and purposes. You understand? There's a reason why the laws in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29 says, do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a harlot. You do not sit there and leave somebody's daughter or any daughter, your daughter or otherwise, inside the studio with some man talking about, well, you was gonna make me a star. You made that child an unwanted whore. You understand? And for the other brothers and sisters who don't even claim to be the house of Israel, R. Kelly does not represent the black man. Oh, they just want to bring down the black man. So all of the black colleges that exist and all of the black banks that do exist and all of the black law firms that exist, if they want to bring down a strong black thing, why not attack the black colleges, the black law firms and the black banks? Why will they sit there and attack an R&B singer? If they wanted to quote bring down the black man, that don't represent the black man. He does not represent the black man. A black college represents the black people more. A black bank can represent the black people more than a person up there talking about age ain't nothing but a number. You understand? Seems like you're ready, girl. Are you ready? I could have sworn you was ready. Come on now, you ain't gonna compare that to the prophets of old in the Bible talking about girl. I saw you was ready. Because when a marriage happened in righteousness, you already know that the female is ready. Not girl, but the female who's a grown woman is already ready. So you ain't got to sit back and wonder, it seems like you're ready. I could have sworn you was ready. That's not a marriage. What do you mean you could have sworn she was ready? I thought you was married already. No, you was talking about stroke the middle, work the middle first before you thought about marriage. So the idiots out there among the Israelites, trying to sit there and compare R. Kelly to somebody that's of decency in the Bible, stop it. And keep yourself from me because I'm raising a daughter and that energy cannot be around my little precious child. Yeah, it's that important. You understand? So this is something we want to talk about for edification purposes. You understand? Let's go into the next slide. This is what they're saying is street harassment now. Sweetie, can I get a pretty smile? Hey, good looking. Hey, is that for me? Where you going, beautiful? Ow, wow, oh wow, or whatever that's supposed to be saying. Ow. Now, let's look at this thing here that I saw on the meme online, right? Some of them comments. Of the five comments there, are more decent, if you will, than others. Let's pick them out. Sweetie, can I get a pretty smile? What's wrong with that? Please, somebody in the comment section when this is uploaded, please explain what's wrong with saying pretty. Pardon me. Sweetie, can I get a pretty smile? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with saying, hey, good looking? Would you rather somebody say, hey, ugly? Let me break this down for real life. I remember one time, I must have been about maybe 16 or so, maybe, or 14 or whatever. And I remember walking down in Queens on Baisley Boulevard in Queens. To give an exact location, I was right under the trestle with the Long Island Railroad from Locust Manor in Queens. The Long Island Railroad goes toward Jamaica Center where Suffolk Boulevard is. So you can get an idea where I'm talking about. I was walking from Merrick Boulevard over to Guy Brewer Boulevard. For those who know, that's a good little walk if you're up for it. Anyway, right? This brother was walking toward the direction I was walking. There was a sister that was ahead of me. So I was walking some paces behind her. When their paths met, 
He said, hey, good looking girl, how you doing? You have a beautiful day. I hope your day is as fine as you are. And she said, okay. And she kept right on walking with a smile. Some seconds later or so, this brother that was inside of a car, he pulled up and said, hey, sweetheart, with your fine self, how you doing, girl? And she just waved and said, I'm okay. And she kept on walking. When I walked up to her and I turned around and I saw how fine that sister was, I was thinking to myself, she probably don't even want me. Two brothers already complimented her before I even saw her. So I'm going to just keep on walking. I didn't feel, quote, comfortable enough to even approach the sister like that. I'm like, sister, in my mind, I'm like, she already knows she's pretty. I'm going to keep on walking. That's what I said to myself. But those brothers, the one who walked up toward her, you understand? And the brother that was in the car, all of that happened in a matter of two minutes. She didn't sit there and say, this is street harassment. She smiled, took the compliment, and kept on going her way. That was in the 1990s when a man could sit there and perhaps compliment a woman before this homosexual, lesbian, homosexual sodomite society try to sit there and say, you should not even have to sit there and accept that from the opposite gender. He should not be talking to you and complimenting you. And because they know a lot of females, especially of our people, which we're going to highlight on as we go on, were raised in many cases with no fathers, they didn't even hear, hey, little sweetheart, are you pretty? You're pretty, you know that? You're a little darling. They probably didn't hear that or get enough hugs from their biological father. So it's easy 30, 40 years later to sit there and tell these women, he wasn't even there and all men were like your father because you know most niggas ain't S-H-I-T. So now you can play on the aspect of having the father's house on the women now who don't understand perhaps when a compliment is and when something is disrespectful, she don't know how to differentiate. So with this mean, you can sit back and see how they mix the two that is decent as well as indecent and say it's all bad because they're labeling it as street, street harassment. Where are you going, beautiful? Now that could be taken not so much literally as harassment, but maybe a bit too personal. She could be going to a funeral for all you know. She could be going from another job after losing a job for all you know. So you never really know her temperament or her spirit at that particular time. So that can be yay and nay. Then there's the one on top. Hey, is that for me? I've known the sisters who will ask certain things like that. The average answer is, of course not. You bugging. You the fool. And she'll keep right on walking. But the average sister, even if she knows that the guy is a bozo, if the guy could be presenting himself as disrespectful, she knows that even if he turns back and say, you know what, my bad, you know what, you have a good day later. She knows even if she feels a way, he at least left a good word at the end of the day, even if she thinks that apology was garbage. He cleared his slate in that particular case. If we're only talking about words that was being stated and nobody was groping or touching no one in that particular case. So let's go on and show the stupidity once it comes down to this thing that they call street harassment, all right? For edification purposes. So we could begin to see the folly that's being presented in this particular case, all right? Let's look at this here. Stop telling women to smile. Women do not owe you their time or conversation. Women are not outside for your entertainment. My name is not baby, shorty, sexy, sweetie, honey, pretty, boo, sweetheart, or ma. All right. Let's break this down 
and show how in this Luciferian serpent-like mentality, society, how they try to sit there and mix the two. Stop telling women to smile. Let's stop there, skip it, because we're going to go back to that for a reason. Women do not owe you their time or conversation. All right. And truthfully, she doesn't. But let's see what happens when she supposedly doesn't, quote, owe you the time or conversation. There was a comedian by the name of Adele Givens, and she said that the women who sit there and feel like that, they're going to, quote, F up and missed on their man. That could be a good man for them. I'm independent. I don't need no man. I don't owe you my time. Adele Givens, who is a female, pretty too, may I add, she sat there and said the women who are like that can be effing themselves up and be missing out on their man. So now, remembering they're dealing with women in this society, mostly sisters, who in many cases did not have fathers in their houses. So it's easier now to still program their mind once it comes to anybody or power. Well, the government said, the, the, the man, he said, I don't even owe you any time. You don't. Stay single and be happy. Well, you know, it's better to be single than to be miserable. So let's understand that mindset. You're only saying the reality is either single or miserable, not the third party that could be happy and of peace. That doesn't count. You're saying I'd rather be single than be miserable. So why not the idea of you rather be happy and content and inside of a relationship? Whatever happened to that one? No. Let's pump black people with divorce court in the early 2000s and the late 1990s. Because when that generation from the fatherless homes grow up, we're going to show them, boom, divorce court, men ain't S-H-I-T. You understand? That's what that is with that. Women are not outside for your entertainment. Let's understand something with that. I have sisters, biological. Women like, in most cases, attention. You understand? Even when a woman tells a brother that he is too young for her, she's 42, he's 22. Most cases, they'll still say, well, these guys like me, I just can't entertain that. If she has any kind of understanding, you understand? The average intelligent woman knows how to reject a brother for one reason or the other and still sit there and maintain some kind of aspect of saying, thank you, but no thank you. I remember one time, speaking personally, there was I was about maybe 21, and I moved on this lady approached her to talk to her in the mall in Green Acres. For those who know, Green Acres is in Long Island and in Nassau County, right? I had said to her, I said, excuse me, miss, can I talk to you for a second? And she looked at me and she said, yes. And I said, nah, I just wanted to stop you to tell you that you're pretty, you're beautiful, and I hope you have a beautiful night as well. She said, well, thank you for that. And I said, I would like to know your beautiful name. And then her response was, my beautiful name is Mrs. Robinson. I said, oh, all right. I'm sorry. She said, no, it's okay. I am married, but thank you for the compliment. And that's how it ended. That's how that conversation ended. I didn't know that that lady was married when I made my approach upon her. She accepted the compliment. She let me know that's where it's going to end. She said, Mrs. Robinson, like, let it be known signal. She's not saying miss. Mrs. identifies that she's married. Okay? So this is something we want to talk about in that particular case. You know? I had to sit there and understand and respect that and fall back and say, you have a good night, and I kept them moving. You understand? Women are not outside for your entertainment. 
My name is not baby, shorty, sexy, sweetie, honey, pretty, boo, sweetheart, or ma. I have a little girl, my daughter. Her grandmother calls her sweetie, she calls my daughter honey, and she calls her sweetheart. But remember, we're dealing with women today who did not have, in many cases, grandparents, in many cases, fathers in the home. So we want to keep emphasizing that periodically in this presentation so that way it can be known and understood what we're dealing with. All right? These women that are programmed in that kind of mentality that says, don't have to tell me to smile. I don't owe you no time of conversation. My name is not, we're going to skip through that part. My name is not shorty, sexy, honey, boo, or ma. Now, who are they talking about in that meme? Because it's black men, brothers who said, hey, yo, ma, what's good, boo? We the ones brothers who talk like that. So this is why I'm talking about that in this particular situation. This is something we want to talk about in this particular situation. Somebody commented by saying they also, speaking of sisters, they also should not leave their homes without being properly covered in modest garments. That's very true. Because you can't sit there and show cleavage, you understand? And to sit there and show the outprint of curves and everything like that and wonder why you're getting certain kinds of attention. Oh, I don't even know why this, you know what it is. Because you saw yourself in the mirror before you walked out the house. You understand? So ain't nobody just getting played over and over with this kind of mentality but us. So when we see this kind of meme and it says my name is not baby, shorty, ma, or boo, that's the terminology boo that sisters called brothers and brothers called sisters by boo. So who is this directed toward if not the scattered tribes of Israel whose family is in disarition and derision? And desolation is the word I meant to say. Pardon me. I meant to say family is in desolation. You understand? Her eyes shall be evil against the husband of her bosom and against her son and against her daughter for the want of all things is secret. His eyes shall be evil against the wife of his bosom and against his son and against his daughter. So this is why when you read in the book of Malachi, it says the Most High will restore to Elijah the prophet in spirit it says what? The hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Because a broken family is not the way of the most high. Look at the Sabbath floor. You, your son, your daughter. It's meant as a family oriented aspect. But when you can convince a woman, brothers and sisters, That she is not even worth the time or the conversation. She's not going to be feeling she should be worth to even produce more of her own people. This is a form of baby genocide. So now let's look at the first part of this. And I wanted to highlight this part later on in this for a reason. Stop telling women to smile. Stop telling women to smile. Is that what we are reading? Let's see the foolishness that comes from that kind of teaching. Next slide, please. Stop telling women to smile. That is highlighted. We're going to show, brothers and sisters, a problem with that kind of teaching and that kind of ideology. Next slide, please. Smiling and what science says. Smiling can lift a bad mood. Scientists have found that smiling on purpose can help people feel better. Just a simple act of putting a smile on your face can lead you to feel actual happiness, joy, or amusement. 
Smiling on purpose changes brain chemistry. All right. How smiling affects your brain. Each time you smile, your brain feels really happy. When a smile flashes across your face, dopamine, endorphins, and serotonin are all released into your bloodstream, making not only your body relax, but also work to lower your heart rate and blood pressure. So hold on. This is what they're saying that science brings out about smiling. Right? It affects your brain. And it gives positive aspects of these effects. So let's go back to the foolishness of this thing here that is saying, stop telling women to smile. So what they're saying is this. When they say, stop telling women to smile, they are saying what? Stop telling women do, to do something that can lead to them feeling actual happiness, joy, and amusement. When they're saying, stop telling women to smile, what they are saying is this. Do not do something that can cause dopamine, endorphins, and serotonin to be released into your bloodstream, making not only your body relax, but also work to lower your heart rate and blood pressure. So when you say, Brothers and sisters, stop telling women to smile. Know what you're saying. See, this is this thing that we're talking about with this man, you know, white man, and what he has programmed our people to sit there and believe. They're not here for your amusement. Stop telling them to smile. Why would you want to not tell someone to smile? It said it can lift the bad mood. So let's go back, okay, dealing with the PowerPoint, the way it was set up, with this foolishness here, right, that says, stop telling women to smile. Look how miserable that woman looks in there. Is that something that you want to even go into a job interview with, with that kind of mug face? Can't you tell me? I ain't, you can't tell me nothing. Bye-bye. Job is done. We, the position's been filled. Can't take your attitude. I have seen, I have seen, brothers and sisters, human resources lead sisters out of the building because of their funky attitudes in the office. Working in corporate America, in Manhattan, in New York, I have seen black women sisters escorted to the door and said, thank you, because you don't know how to have a better attitude. You understand? So this is something we want to sit there and point out for edification purposes. So when you're up there saying, stop telling women to smile, what you are saying is to do this. So we can sit there and get into that aspect one more time. All right? You are saying, do not lift the bad mood. You are saying, do not do something that can cause people to feel better. Do not do something that can actually cause happiness, joy, or amusement. Do not do something that's going to sit there and release serotonin into your bloodstream and not only make your body relax like you need to be for an interview, but also work to lower your heart rate and blood pressure. They want sisters to have that mug face. They don't want the black woman to be told to smile because they can't even sit there and tell you at the same token on the same internet what smiling can actually do. That's a good thing. But they don't want good for us. You see how that game was played and how we were played in that game? You understand? Next slide, please. Slow down. Just let me lick your shoulder at Catfish or Cat Calls of New York. That's pretty outlandish. Just let me lick your shoulder. Of course, most women would be like, you need to get up out my face with that foolishness. That one right there is disrespectful. 
But see what this society has done and what they call street harassment, they mix what is disrespectful, they mix what is indecent with something that is pleasant, such as, hey, give me a smile. You should smile anyway, you got a pretty smile. Hey, beautiful. See how they mix it like that? So that way the sister, if she can't differentiate following that serpent, like Eve followed the serpent, follow along, like Eve followed the serpent, and she did not follow the understanding that her man was telling her, her man who was her mate, who was told from the creator, do not eat of this, for in the time in which you eat of this, you shall surely die. What has happened with our people working on through the women like the serpent did in the Bible? Are we not dead like Ezekiel 37 says? Breathe upon this lane. Ezekiel, can these bones live? Thou knowest. Ataya data. Ezekiel didn't even sit there and say, of course, all things are possible. He looked at what our people are going through in that prophecy. Uh, I don't know. Thou knowest. Hataya Data Elohim, you know only Most High. He saw the product of Willie Lynch. This is mine. It ain't yours. Whatever happened to the our spirit? You understand? H O, not H O U R, but O U R, our spirit. Whatever happened to us in building together? See, in Hebrew, the way to say to build is the word bana, right? The way to say house in Hebrew is the word bait. Bain is son and bat is daughter. So with the bain and a bat, you are doing the act of bana, building a bait. With a son and a daughter, you are building a house. But if you're teaching them after having no fathers in many cases in the house, no man is worth your time and attention, girl. You just keep that mug face looking like can't nobody touch this. Yeah. And then you wonder why. And this is a harsh one. You wonder why breast cancer is high among black women. It's because breast cancer, one more time, can come from a lack of sexual activity. And that should only be with your mate, with your spouse. But because you have the mug face going on, can't nobody tell me nothing. You actually bring forth other energies that can affect your physicality. Do you understand where we're going with this kind of aspect? Do you know why lesbians have a higher rate of breast cancer to get? Is because when a woman is with her mate, like it says in the Bible, in Exodus, her conjugal rights, you shall not diminish. There are certain energies that are released that only come from redder, gooder, heterosexual sex. Lesbianism does not perform on her physical body like it is in heterosexuality because that's not the way the Most High created it to be under bisexuality or homosexuality. You stand a greater risk of diseases. Did you know that? Did you know that when a woman is with her husband, this is grown talk, and she is sexually active with her husband, there are certain energies that are released from her that will sit there and cause it to not to be harsh, quote, back up. That's science. You can look that up. Real talk. So we may want to have the sisters. We want to show this one more time. Right? When they want to have the sisters mean mugging, as in this meme that we're seeing right here, to the left-hand side, stop telling women to smile. You got it right there, baby. You just handle everything on your own. You don't need a man for nothing. They had brothers and sisters and have a billboard in New York City with the woman standing in part on top of a box saying, I handled retirement. Now I'll handle buying my own house. So in other words, get that nigger out the house. You do you, girl. You got it, baby. Tell the cracker, don't call you baby. Tell that fool that. Because sisters have been telling brothers that for who knows how long. Tell the person who taught you to speak to us negatively, talk to him like that and see what happens. I'll tell you what happened. HR walks him out the building. I've seen it in corporate America. That's what happened to them sisters. You understand? This is something we want to talk about 
for edification purposes. All right? Let's go on, if you will, to the next slide. We already went over what science says, all right, in that particular aspect. Now, maybe I should embrace the people for this one. Ridiculous part five. What are we looking at here? This is in New York City. They had a thing in New York City. Those are all males in the picture. There's no female in that picture. In New York City, they had a thing called stop and frisk. And after they would frisk you, the cops, they would say stop, frisk, and kiss. So they would kiss you in New York City. The police would kiss you in the aspect of saying, well, I ain't find no paraphernalia, no guns, no drugs, in a way of trying to uh, make up, if you will, for frisking somebody unnecessarily, they had a thing in New York called Stop, Frisk, and Kiss. Stop and Kiss. You can look this up online. You understand? This is what they rather support as opposed to a sister being told, hey, good looking, where you going? I have the mindset that I know if I say to a sister, hey, good looking, how you, how you doing? I'm okay. Maybe she's in a bad mood. I don't know. For all I know, Majority of the women that I may have seen in the street and say, hey, sweetie, how you doing? Can I talk to you for a second? No, I'm good. For all I know, she could be married. Let's break this down so it could be known for a reason and purposes what true respect is and what disrespect is. There was a sister. When I say, brothers, when I say this woman was fine, she was, ah, she was fine, gorgeous. You know what the Holy Bible says? She is fair to look upon. That I saw in real life when I was younger. So I, I'm going to talk to her because, well, she's pretty. What she was in real terms is called a dime. For those, in other words, that just dime is like ya farm and old, like just flawless. No pimples, no freckles. Sister didn't even have no dimples. I mean, everything was just so gorgeous. But that's just the physical. Let's show how her spirit was also just as pretty as that. I approached the sister and I said, good evening, how you doing? And she laughed and said, it's not evening, it's still afternoon. And I said, you know, and I took that advantage to say, you know what, I'm ahead of myself. I gotta get my lines together. I meant to say good afternoon, how can I talk to you and call you this evening? She said, I'll take your number but I cannot give you mine. That's what the sister told me. I was like, all right. Now, most cases, we males believe when she says, I'm going to call you, but I can't give you my number, we already expect to not get a call. And okay, I did not get a call. But here's a reason why I did not get the call. A brother approached her and I. She walked away to talk to her female friends. The brother was standing there and he looked at me and he said, them some fine women over there. I said, yes, they are. I said, that one right there that you saw me talking to, she pretty as who knows what, don't you think she's pretty? He said, yeah, she does look good. I said, yeah, she is very good looking. No sooner than literally like a minute later, that sister walked back to us and said to that man, that brother that was talking to me, what did you say to him? She said that to him about me. And I'm there like, okay, this must be her man. I don't know if she's trying to play him or been playing him. And he said, well, I got to defend for my woman. That wasn't her man. That was her brother, her biological brother. The reason why that sister did not call me, however, is because she is a, or was at the time, a Christian, and she saw all the Israelite symbols that I had on, such as my fringes and so forth, the so on, the Hebrew emblem that I had on my chain and everything like that. So 
that sister believing in Christianity, she knows I am a Hebrew by understanding faith and ethnicity and culture. That's why she didn't call me. She told me that. When I saw her later, I said, yeah, you never called me. She said, no, I, she's speaking of herself. She said, we will be unequally yoked because she believes in a different one than I believe in. And I said, oh, okay. So I understood why she never called me. We had different understandings of faith. But the point I'm saying in all of that is this. He felt the understanding to protect his sister from somebody who he don't know is a creep. And I'm not a creep. The other aspect was, had I been disrespectful, yeah, she looked good and I'm gonna take her in the back room, we gonna do what we do. That brother probably would have wanted to lay hands on me. But I didn't come off disrespectful like that to the sister or about the sister. You understand? She will always remember, even though she didn't want to quote, date or court with a Hebrew guy, because she is a Christian and dealing with the church. She will always know that one Hebrew guy was respectful to her and her brother. And that brother in Israel is how we're supposed to represent. Not talking about going online, making a meme, talking about this my bitch, and she sit there and serve me. What are these schools doing these days? That's ridiculous. You understand? So, Back to this, brothers and sisters. That's why I call this ridiculous. That's what they rather promote with the law enforcement. This kind of foolishness here, as opposed to what we discussed earlier. Hey, good looking, how you doing? And speaking to the opposite gender. Heterophobia, Urban Dictionary. I'm going to leave that on the screen and I'll return momentarily. Urban Dictionary for Heterophobia is this. The often irrational fear of heterosexuals, usually experienced by a homosexual or bisexual who was had bad experiences with heterosexual coupling. Number two. Also used as a joke, a way for a homosexual slash bisexual person to tease straight friends when they're making out. That's the urban dictionary of heterophobia. Next. Definition of heterophobia. Irrational fear of aversion to or discrimination against heterosexual people. Heterophobia. Now, heterosexual, in other terms, is called straight. So we can understand what we're talking about. You know how all of that connects to each other? Because homosexuality among females, in many cases, comes from abuse, 
molestation. They don't wake up saying they want a girl. You understand? Something happened that caused that in most cases when you ask them. Among males, I don't know how to explain that one. That's just disgusting, straight up. I, I don't know no deeper understanding than that. You understand? But um, what they have done and tried to do is make themselves seem as if they are part of the regular, quote, society. When in actuality, your whole identity is based upon your sexual acts. See, a person can say that he or she is straight, and that means that they, as a male, only are mating with a female. A female who only mates with a male is called straight. But when you are doing other things besides being straight, you are by definition bisexual or homosexual. That means your whole definition is based upon sexuality. Your whole idea and your whole image is based upon some kind of perverted aspect of sexuality. Whereas once it comes down to people who are straight, they're just straight. You understand? Their identity is not based upon sex. Do you get where I'm going with this? This shows you the perversion and the wickedness in the carnal mindset at the lower chakra, as some people call it, that some people want to sit there and be identified as. You know what I mean? Let's go on to the next slide. Forty-four years ago today, the American Psychiatric Association, Psychiatric, sorry, Association, APA, the largest psychiatric organization in the world, made history by issuing a resolution stating that homosexuality was not a mental illness or sickness. This declaration helped shift public opinion, making a major milestone for LGBTQ equality. The resolution stated, we will no longer insist on a label of sickness for individuals who insist that they are well and demonstrate no generalized impairment and social effectiveness. The statement continued to say that APA supports civil rights legislation at local, state, and federal levels that would ensure homosexual citizens the same protection now guaranteed to others. We're going to discuss who those others are in a minute. Now, more than 40 years later, LGBTQ advocates are still fighting to achieve that reality. Despite significant steps forward, 31 states still lack clear full, inclusive, non-discrimination protections for LGBTQ people, meaning that LGBTQ people are at risk of being fired, denied housing, and denied services for who they are or whom they love. Now, This article goes back to the year 2013, when it says 40 years ago today. Because in 1973 is when the APA said that homosexuality is no longer a mental illness. So when you have men having sex with men, you would then have women having sex with women. You would then have men and women having sex with men and women or bisexuality or so forth and so on. You understand? We will no longer insist on the label of sickness for individuals who insist that they are well and demonstrate no generalized impairment and social effectiveness. Somebody else determined that somebody else is not sick.
whoever agreed to that have the same sickness, by the way. Next slide. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that same-sex marriage is a legal right across the United States. It means the 14 states with bans on same-sex marriage will no longer be able to enforce them. Justice Anthony Kennedy wrote that the plaintiffs act for equal dignity in the eyes of the law. The Constitution grants them that right. The ruling brings to an end more than a decade of bitter legal battles. Same-sex couples in several affected states, including Georgia, Michigan, Ohio, and Texas, rushed to wed on Friday. However, officials in other states, including Mississippi and Louisiana, said marriages had to wait until procedural issues were addressed. President Barack Obama said the ruling was a victory for America. When all Americans are treated as equal, we are all more free. Was somebody suffering from a down low complex and had to emerge from it? The sit there say, when all Americans are free, then we are all more free. What, you got something battling in your own spirit? You portraying yourself with a woman and children, but that's another subject, Mr. Obama. You understand? Brothers and sisters, the first said black president of the United States was more in keen to helping a man who sits there and does oral sex on another man. Nobody's considering the actor back in the 80s or 70s who was a homosexual and had to get his stomach pumped from going down and sucking on so many men. What about that sickness? They didn't talk about the aspect of doctors who have to sit there and remove gerbils and hamsters out of somebody's anus because they was getting down and dirty with the same gender. They didn't talk about those health aspects because that stuff didn't matter. This is what we mean about the aspect of how one form of wickedness then let crept into another form. You understand? Bitter legal battles. Next slide. What is a hate crime? Hate crimes, this is the definition from the FBI. A hate crime is a traditional offense like murder, arson, or vandalism with an added element of bias. For the purposes of collecting statistics, the FBI has defined a hate crime as a criminal offense against a person or property motivated in whole or in part by an offender's bias against a race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender, or gender identity. Hate itself is not a crime, and the FBI is mindful of protecting freedom of speech and other civil liberties. These efforts serve as a backup for investigations by state and local authorities, which handle the vast majority of hate crime cases throughout the country. A crime in Hebrew is said as the word pesha. It comes from the root word pasha, right? Now, somebody put in the comments, how do we go from women not smiling to this? Bye, this is pointless. All right, brother or sister in the comments, whoever, bye. You take care too, all right? Maybe everything is not meant for everybody in presentation, but we're talking about the aspect of how one form of wickedness leads into the other because the aspect of saying the women who are told to not smile is the same government and the same people that is up there saying that it is okay that your boy be taught to be a girl in school. 
So whoever the person is in the comment section that I have over next to me by the computer that said, how do we go from women not smiling to this and then asked by or said by, this is pointless. Maybe you didn't point to everybody. But the subject matter is this. The same society that promotes the singing of street harassment and don't tell women to smile is the same society that is telling teachers that they are going to try to have to teach about being transgender to boys and girls. That is the point. Maybe you didn't know what was going on in the society. Maybe you didn't know homosexuality is going to be bashed on this channel. You understand? But we are showing how the aspect of one thing had led to the next thing. So let's continue on. They're saying this, that a hate crime by the FBI is defined as a criminal offense against a person or property motivated in whole or in part by an offender's bias against a race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, ethnicity, gender, or gender identity. How do you have gender and gender identity unless you're already promoting the idea that you can be identified by another than your birth gender? That's the point. So anybody saying this was pointless? Shalom. Take care. Because this is the same society that's telling you, brothers and sisters, that it is all right to have your boy and your girl to be taught to be, you can be anything you want to be today. See, the generation before was telling the people homosexuality is not a problem. And then after that, they work on the aspect of telling the females, don't let no man tell you to smile. So now that they already set that in motion, the next thing is what? Work on the children. Because in many cases, the children, I'm already 38, my daughter's already 12. The generation that I came up under, in most cases, did not have the fathers in the house. And that's what they preyed upon in the first place. This is all by, quote, master design. They planned this. This is not an accident. See, people who come from normal, stable homes are not usually the ones who grow up to be, quote, sexual predators and offenders, in most cases. Ask the people who are registered as a sex offender about how their upbringing was and then sit back and see brothers and sisters what's going on in this particular society that they're leading the people into the bible in genesis chapter 19 right it says what when the sodomites went to lot's door it said that the men and the children ran to the door homosexuality does not have quote discrimination against children this is why America has a thing called NABLA about young boys with American men, grown men with American boys. You see, when Obama made it, quote, okay for the homosexuals, so were the pedophiles asking for their rights after that. So it ain't too hard to understand where the point is going in this. So they got the children being taught it's okay to be a boy when you're a girl and vice versa. They already don't try to sit there and scientifically and strategically, economically and socially put the man about the house and then have the generation, two generations later taught that you can sit there and be a girl when you was born with the XY chromosome. So that's the point. That's why one thing led to the next. Next slide. The FBI's role in regards to hate crimes. As part of its responsibility to uphold the civil rights of the American people, the FBI takes a number of steps to combat the problem of hate crimes. The following efforts serve as a backstop to investigations conducted by state and local law enforcement agencies, which handle the vast majority of bias crime investigations throughout the country. Investigative activities. The FBI is the lead investigative agency for criminal violations of federal civil rights statutes. The Bureau works closely with its local, state, tribal, and federal law enforcement partners 
around the country in many of these cases. That becomes important on what they call hate crimes. You know what, brothers and sisters? When a black man kills another black man, do they label that as a hate crime or black on black crime? I'll go so far to say when the guy in the hotel killed Robbie Kennedy, was that called a hate crime? See, the point I'm mentioning is the terminology hate crime itself is dumb. Because if there was love, you wouldn't do the crime in the first place. So to sit there and say a hate crime, there's no such thing then as a quote love crime. The terminology itself makes no sense. This is the point. As we went over before, when you're in the cesspool of trying to promote wickedness, brothers and sisters, it makes you make dumb statements such as a hate crime when all crimes are based on some kind of hate. Because if there was love, you wouldn't do the crime in the first place. That's the wisdom that doesn't come to a person who's trying to promote wickedness. That wisdom has fled from that. Pro oh, yeah, that's right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that does make sense. But to a person who's steeped in his or her wickedness, they will try to combat that kind of statement. There's a hate crime and there's a there's a passion crime. And then there's, there's this time in the crime. Listen, if you have love in your heart and you got love for yourself. You're not going to sit there and do those kind of crimes or any kind of crime. But because they call judgment from the most high for sin, a crime, we begin to see what that is. You understand? Sodomites, down low homo, lesbian. Your ideology isn't going to work on all people on the earth. Calling people outside of their name, you're homophobic and all this other kind of foolishness. That's not going to sit there and make somebody want to sit there and be like your wickedness. Once it comes down to a black person who done been called everything from a nigga. Moonshine. Monkey. Jigaboo. Spear chucker. Bastard. You understand? Your soulless creature. Your color of your skin looks like SHIT in the toilet. That's what we have been hearing as black people in America. So to come now with some fallacious, idiotic terminology, such as homophobic, is not going to sit there and move a person of the most high. We will be known as such, so be it. It's a terminology that you made up for yourself. And when your generation and your wickedness expires, there will be no more. Because heterosexuality is how you get more people. You understand? See, when a man is with a man and they want to adopt a boy or a girl, that's folly. When a woman does not want a man, but she wants to sit there and act like she's the mom and or the mom slash dad, that's foolishness. I've seen pictures of women holding the baby as if it's us. This is ridiculous. Sister, lady, girl, woman, whatever role you're playing in your relationship, if you call it a relationship, whatever you're relating on, you're not the father of the baby. Stop holding your, quote, girlfriend's baby as if it's yours. You understand? The homosexual sodomite male talking about we want to adopt children and all that other kind of foolishness. You didn't go through what a man goes through with his wife when she's pregnant. Morning sickness, vomiting in the morning, the stretch marks, the aggravation that she's dealing with, the fact she's dealing with a bunch of emotions, the fact the baby's kicking her in the stomach, the fact that the baby sometimes is turning inside her womb. You didn't go through that, sodomite. But you want the pleasure of having a little boy or girl around. You didn't go through sodomite woman, the man who tried to sit there and be there, or the man who was there, but he don't know how to deal with a woman who's pregnant. 
but you want to sit there and deal with the benefits of having a baby around. But you didn't want to go through the drama that it took to even have that baby, to even the act of having a baby itself. One. Secondly, the act of who your mate is. Because sometimes men don't understand that when a woman is pregnant, the baby is given forth hormones, which affect her mind and her spirit. So you got to be understanding, brothers, when your lady, your wife, your spouse is pregnant. She's not her normal self. Work with her when she's going through that first trimester, second trimester. The sodomites don't want that. They don't want to deal with the trimesters. They don't want to have to sit there and deal with that. You know what? I'm going to have to work more hours because um, you're going to be on maternity leave maybe a little bit longer, and you might not be getting even a check from the job. You don't want to have to deal with that when you're a sodomite. But you want to deal with the benefit of talking about, I can adopt. Your wickedness is amazing. Next slide. And that's the point. The civil rights movement was an organized effort by black Americans to end racial discrimination and gain equal rights under the law. May 17, 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education. A consolidation of five cases into one is decided by the Supreme Court, effectively ending racial segregation in public schools. December 1st, 1955, the modern civil rights movement began by Rosa Parks, an African-American woman, was arrested for refusing to move to the back of the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Civil rights, Brown versus the Board of Education and the matter with Rosa Parks. All right. How does this tie into what we're talking about? Rosa Parks was a woman who in Alabama didn't want to get up on a bus to give her seat to a white man. That was during the Jim Crow era as well and so forth and so on. The situation that we mentioned above that or before that with Brown versus the Board of Education about the aspect of education and schools in regards to black children and segregation and so forth and so on, right? Let's see what we were talking about earlier. To see earlier in this presentation, right? We went over this particular aspect. Look at the second paragraph. The resolution stated, we will no longer insist on a label of sickness for individuals who insist that they are well and demonstrate no generalized impairment and social effectiveness. The statement continued to say the APA supports civil rights legislation at local, state, and federal levels that would ensure homosexual citizens the same protection now guaranteed to others. Who are these others that is talking about is the black man, woman, and child? That's why I said earlier, we are going to define what this part meant when it said others. Because we're going to show how the civil rights movement that was dated, starting with us, black people, in the 1950s, that sat there and been transformed over to a man who wants to sit there and put gerbils in another man's behind. This is why we Old Testament Israelites say what we say about Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, and he numbered him with the transgressors. Because the plight of the black man in this society is equated to a faggot. They took the rights that black people were fighting for and gave it to a man who puts a gerbil in another man's behind. So when we say, as Old Testament-based brothers and sisters, that Isaiah 53rd chapter is the nation of Israel, it says, and he was numbered with the transgressors. He, Israel, is equated with the transgressors in our with the transgressors in our so-called rights. That's what that's talking about in that particular regard. You understand? So when we get into this particular subject, that's what we're talking about. All right? 
This act signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson on July 2nd, 1964, prohibited discrimination in public places, provided for the integration of schools and other public facilities, and made employment discrimination illegal. This document was the most sweeping civil rights legislation since Reconstruction. Reconstruction dates back to the 1860s. Let's go on, okay, or 1870s. Let's go on to the next part. As part of its responsibility to uphold the civil rights of the American people, the FBI takes a number of steps to combat the problem of hate crimes. The civil rights movement was an organized effort by black Americans to end racial discrimination and gain equal rights under the law. Next slide. Brothers and sisters and elders, there's nothing wrong with saying hello pretty. Can you smile to a person? Periodically, people tell me to smile more. I remember when I used to think it was, quote, tough to walk with your head down while walking, as stated. It was not tough. It was a fact of one being depressed. Isaiah in the Bible, speaking comfortably to the house of Israel, says this. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from thy bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Loose thyself from, thy, from the bands of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. So, black women, Take heed to what that says in the book of Isaiah. Shake thyself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. What is the daughter of Zion as a captive? Let's go back and show what Isaiah is talking about. So we can begin to see the daughter of Zion as a captive. So we can begin to see what it's talking about for edification purposes and close out, all right? You ready? went over that, went over that. Remember we read in Isaiah, right? About the captive daughter of Zion. This is what we're talking about in this particular case. It says it right here. This is the captive daughter of Zion in the mean. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise. Stop looking all depressed and sad like somebody wants to sit there and just disrespect you all the time. So when it says what? Stop telling women to smile. That is said to a captive. Don't smile, nigga. You understand? So hopefully this was understood for edification purposes. With that, shalom. Giving honor and praise to the creator and the maker of heaven and earth.